What does a smart city look like? The way I understand it, a smart city is you are going to be dependent on an Uber, on a Lyft, on a city bike, on a ride share companies, on an app. That's what a smart city is. We're losing access. They're hijacking our streets. Our streets are supposed to be protected for the New Yorker. Our, our elected officials should not be selling out our streets. And that's exactly what they're doing. The congestion pricing details are out, and tonight drivers are lashing out. Vehicles entering Manhattan south of 60th Street would be hit with the following tolls. Cars would pay 15 bucks, trucks 24 to 36, and 750 for motorcycles. Taxis would be charged 125 per ride, and rideshare vehicles 250. Hello, America, FBI, and CIA agents, and fellow cult members. Welcome. To Culture Club USA. I am Debrava, and today we are here with an amazing advocate. Give me an introduction to who you are, who you advocate for, and what they do. So, uh, uh, my name is Raul Rivera. I'm a TLC driver advocate. I'm a native New Yorker. I was born in the Bronx. Currently, you know, I'm the founder of NYC Drivers Unite. It's a small group. Uh, we, we go down to City Hall and we give our testimonies. Uh, we try to have some bills drafted. When we have uh, elected officials who are voted in, and just because you're voted in, that doesn't automatically make you a leader. I want to talk about congestion pricing. It's going to have a severe, severe impact. And, you know, what's troubling is a lot of drivers don't understand because they feel like, well, the customer is going to pay for the toll. So they're going to be OK. A taxi drivers are calling on Governor Hochul to help them fight a new congestion pricing fee. They gather outside Governor Hochul's office on the east side, asking for her to take action and exempt them. Drivers say it would destroy their jobs. There's a lot of people that feel that because they don't drive and they don't have a car or own a vehicle, that the congestion pricing doesn't affect them. Explain how the actual congestion pricing is going to affect New York City, period. It's, it's going to turn it into a ghost town. It's going, to turn, it's going to turn 60th Street and below into a ghost town. And here we have 51 council members, and the majority of them don't say anything about it. They all hush hush. They don't say anything about it. Why are you selling out our city? The history of this committee will not be forgotten. Whether you want to keep looking at your phones or hear my testimony, that's what you do when we come here and testify. You ignore, and we're going to call it out, and we won't stop. Kathy Hochul, have you spoke to her? Has she tried to help you at all? She was. She just had. She just had a, a, a press conference here the other day. We was here. She's for congestion pricing. She's the biggest gaslighter we have. I know there's going to be an impact, but we have to also deal with the larger picture, protecting and cleaning up our environment, protecting the quality of air. When it comes to climate change, you want to clean the air? I've been here 54 years. I could breathe just fine. And Mayor Adams? Adams, he's, he's a, the same. He's a bull liquor to the to the governor. He's gonna. They want congestion pricing. You think maybe we should put it on pause for a while until we get our feet on the ground? It's so important. Listen, I I support the concept, but operationalizing concepts, we must get them, must get them right. Uh, we don't want to hurt the economy. We want to deal with the environmental issues. They they BSing people. That's what they're doing, and people are busy. They gotta go to work. They, they don't have time to be advocating. It's a, it's a hard job to advocate. You know, I want to talk to you too. I know Uber came in. Uber has affected a lot of things in this city. I always wonder how Uber is even allowed in the city. Village resident Carol Putrechez blames the explosion of Uber and Lyft services for the additional vehicles on city streets. All these people who are like for congestion pricing, they take Uber and Lyft. Do they really care that those cars are causing pollution? No. Are you guys in the fight together? Are the taxis and the Uber drivers all together? We need to be united. We need to be united. Because Are they, though? I don't. I, I, there's many splinter groups. There's a lot of groups. And uh, my group, NYC Drivers Unite, we're not signed up as a not-for-profit. It's my belief that many of these groups are more interested in creating a union, creating a, a, a union where they could collect union dues and keep the drivers in. in in a coma, basically, not alive and not dead, you know? And, and we are small business owners. And a lot of people don't see us that way. We, we spoke at the committee for small businesses. 
and we brought their attention to them that we are small business owners. We have 175,000 small business owners. And next time you see a taxi driver, remember, he's a small business owner. We file a 1099 and we, de we demand protection and respect. Is that how many taxi and, and Uber drivers there are? 175? Wait, the numbers fluctuate, but it's, it's you, you're 150, 175, 180, yes. AOC is in your district. You sat down with her people. She refused to sit down with you, right? Where, how did that go? Any progress there? No progress, no support. We know that the district doesn't uh, support her. We don't know how the hell she keeps winning, but uh, we try to- Do you think they're cheating? Uh, I don't have no proof. I like to have proof before I say those kind of things, but she just keeps winning. I think, I think people are just woke. I think people are just asleep, they're sheep. And, and she's gaslighting New Yorkers. Weaponizing of climate change, that's happening. That's a real thing. The weaponization of climate change, that's a real, real thing. 1960s, oil gone in 10 years. 1970s, another ice age in 10 years. 1980s, acid rain. 1990s, the ozone layer, none happened, but all resulted in more taxes. So talk to me about transalt.org. They're a nonprofit organization. And what do they have to do with these city bikes and how is it affecting the taxi industry? Blocking our streets. We pay taxes for those streets. Me too. We pay taxes. If we pay taxes, you cannot give them away to city bikes, to transalt. Huh? You're giving them away. You're stealing our parking. Get around, park it, Uber, Smith. Rebel. Uh, you're giving away our parking, you know it. Okay, you're giving away our parking to deal. You're giving our parking away to torque it. To zip car. Transalt is the short name. Transalt.org. The, the long name, the full name is Transportation Alternatives. So listen to the name. Transportation Alternatives. Okay, makes sense. They're basically against vehicles. They're against cars. And what they do is they promote all these bikes. They promote uh, closing our streets. They close. They, what I say, they promote the hijacking of our streets. And we have many elected officials, many of the council members, who are with them. Every time there's a press conference, uh, these council members they stand there proudly with this non-for-profit, uh, supporting them, supporting them. And I think there's something not right. You could just kind of feel it in your bones, you know, like the hairs in the back of your neck stand up. You said something's not right. The Queens Transportation Alternatives Activist Committee. We work very closely with transportation alternatives on so many of these initiatives. Uh, they get it and uh, their members get it. And uh, whether it's uh, uh, this announcement or city bike or uh, uh, additional uh, traffic calming measures, uh, they're always there with us uh, every step of the way. They're consistently there. They stand with them. We got uh, the DLT standing with them. The mayor of New York City standing. We're not talking Eric Adams is standing with them? Eric Adams. Some people would say that some of the things that have been done to our street calming and bicycle lanes and things like that have added to the congestion because many streets that were four lane streets are now two lane streets. And on the cross streets, many streets that were two are one. And that does add to congestion. I, I don't support that theory. I believe we have the best uh, uh, transportation system. Uh, and, and many of the council members, and we're not talking about, uh, you know, they just recently joined them. They've been supporting them for decades, for the longest. And, and it's troubling how we are losing access to our streets. This is taxpayer streets. This is supposed to be parking for the New Yorker. And we're losing access to our streets, not only the bikes. Explain to the people that do not understand what is a smart city? What does a smart city look like? The way I understand it, a smart city is you are going to be dependent on an Uber, on a Lyft, on a city bike, on a rideshare companies, on an app. That's what a smart city is. They keep talking about open spaces and cleaner air, cleaner air, but we're losing access. They're hijacking our streets. Our streets are supposed to be protected for the New Yorker. Our, our elected officials should not be selling out our streets. And that's exactly what they're doing. You are selling out New York. You're selling out our streets. You cannot monetize our streets the way they're doing it. So we're talking about uh, the DOT giving away parking to a company called Torquit. Everybody heard of Zipcar? 
And we have another one called Get Around. What is Turkit? Turkit is a it's, it's a rideshare company. Uh, uh, Get Around is another rideshare company, and so is Zipcar. So you, as a New Yorker who pays taxes in the city, you cannot have a vehicle. And they say they're anti-vehicles, and vehicles are polluting the environment. But here they are giving, taking your parking away and giving it to these rideshare companies. They gaslight New Yorkers with the climate change, clean air, safer streets, traffic violence, but at the same time, they're taking our streets away.